registered in Ghanaian health care facilities. The scheme has accredited over 4,000 public and private health care providers at all levels of the health system to ensure that the promised services are made available. The impact of the scheme on health-seeking behavior is also clear. Three in four births in Ghana today are assisted by a skilled provider compared to less than one-third of all births in 2003 when the scheme was first established. And when a fever or cough, which are common symptoms of malaria in Ghana, is reported for a child, the likelihood of seeking formal medical treatment is 66% as a result of the scheme. Our dedication to quality of care should not go unnoticed. We have been undertaking regular clinical audits and taking steps to improve rational drug prescriptions. Ladies and gentlemen, these gains are a testament to the ongoing efforts of our health workforce, collaborators, and development partners for which we are deeply appreciative. Nevertheless, like many of our peers, Ghana is facing an epidemiological transition that is accompanied with a higher burden of non-communicable diseases. Health costs are escalating, and this is beginning to pose a threat to the long-term financial sustainability of the National Health Insurance Scheme. Last year, the Ministry of Health inaugurated a National Health Insurance Technical Committee to holistically review the scheme and provide inputs for its reforms. The committee is still working. We hope and anticipate that this review will help us to address matters related to reimbursements and leakages that have emerged and ultimately lead Ghana on its path to achieving universal health coverage. Advancing financial protection and universal health coverage remains a priority that is outlined in Ghana's health sector medium-term development plan. Our goal is to implement evidence-based health sector reforms and contain costs, while at the same time expanding and sustaining coverage. We recognize that there is no single pathway to achieving universal health coverage. And we know that despite our best efforts, every year an estimated 350,000 people in Ghana still face poverty as a result of out-of-pocket health costs. So we must pay special attention to affordability for the poorest of the population. As a government, we take the challenge very seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, this workshop would allow us all to learn from one another's experiences as we chart on our paths. Some of the questions we, may, uh, must be, we must ask and be bold about are, what are the best ways for governments to engage private sector partners while ensuring equity and quality? Why are some countries able to achieve better maternal and child health outcomes than others with the same level of resources? The countries that will, most, will be most successful in expanding coverage will be those in a mode of continuous learning of their experiences and are able to adapt their approaches based on the best available knowledge and evidence. And so as to the outcome of this workshop, I encourage us to launch a community of practice on health insurance and health financing. On this note, I wish to thank the National Health Insurance Authority, USAID, USAID and the World Health Organization for their excellent work and partnership in making this event possible. I wish you all a very successful and productive five days. Thank you and God bless us all. Madam Chair, Your Excellency, Ambassador of the United States to Ghana, Honorable Minister of Health, Acting Chief Executive of the National Health Insurance Agency, Assistant Administrator of US Aid, Global Bureau of Health, and distinguished participants, all protocol observed. I really like that phrase. <laughs> 
Um, I am actually thrilled at the response uh, by the countries as well as by the partners to the invitation to this meeting. As Megan earlier pointed out, it started as a very small event and has grown four times. We are particularly impressed by the response from Nigeria, Senegal, and of course our host country, Ghana. We are really thankful not only for hosting, but actively participating in this meeting, uh, Honorable Minister. It is doubly gra gratifying to see the eagerness of the countries to address urgent and difficult challenges of our time, and that is equity and financial protection. As we all know, and we will discuss during the course of the workshop, equity is not only essential for economic growth and poverty reduction, but I would sum it, it is our moral imperative. We worked hard uh, in designing the agenda. We wanted to customize it to the needs of the countries, so we extensively consulted our colleagues in the field. And I would like to share the two messages that we got from the field in the course of this discussion. First, the need to focus on implementation and governance issues. And they really did not want to focus just on technical aspect, but on very practical aspect, how to improve implementation and governance. And I'm delighted at the composition of the participants here, because they are all those who have been working day in and day out on solving various problems. So the second point that our colleagues from the field made was that we should emphasize finding solutions to common problems and not just discussing the problems alone. So what are the expected outcome of the meeting? Uh, Ms. Uh, Honorable Minister already pointed out that we should have some community of practice out of this uh, meeting. But the most important point I would like to make is the middle one. That is the outcome of the meeting, we should identify concrete actions to take the health financing and health insurance program to the next level, whatever, wherever it is at the moment. And how we would like to do that this is the first and the third point that is deeper understanding of how to grow financial resources and utilize them better. And the second is that how do we strengthen partnership within the country, with the partners, and among the countries. So the how we want to do it, so we try to move away from the traditional learning approaches and try to adopt newer and more innovative approaches which are based on peer-to-peer -peer learning, participatory design, as I pointed out, that we extensively uh, consulted the field, and then the mix of interactive methods uh, like uh, roundtable talk shows to make it more interesting and more engaging. And then we also included several themes in a session. So each session is divided into three. First is the state of the art to get the latest update on the science. And the second is that we wanted to deep dive into the experiences of one particular country. So that is a spotlight country. And the third is the general sharing of experiences of the countries that are present there. And then, of course, I think most important is that we feel that the learn, if the learning takes place in a team, it is much more effective. So there are country teams from the nine countries, and these teams comprise various stakeholders so that when they go back, they, the, the implementation would be much easier. And of course, we expect that they would be working on their plan and getting the ideas during the course of the week. So now, the next point I would like to show is the what is the thinking behind the agenda. And here, I'm taking away the privilege from my friend, Amanda Folsom, who lost her voice because she was singing and dancing the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to do your work. Uh, 
<laughs> so the thinking the behind the agenda is that on the first day, we will be talking mostly about the basics or the concepts so that we are on the same page. And the concepts really relate to equity, financial protection, and then there is this newer area, behavioral economics, which is emerging, which has quite a significance for the topic that we are talking about. Then the next day, we will be talking about health financing, and the health financing from two sides, that is domestic resource mobilization as well as uh, expenditure and management. Then on the third day, we will have the unique privilege of visiting and looking at the National Health Insurance Program and the health system, and we are really looking forward to it and discussing on the ground the health financing reforms in Ghana and learn from our colleagues in the field. And then on the fourth day, we will be talking about how to expand the coverage, how to improve the health insurance program. So the topics are community-based health insurance program, the private sector, and of course, emerging mobile technology, which I think holds great prom promise for the national health insurance program. And finally, on the last day, the last day would be uh, developing the action plan, but most importantly, developing the measurement tools. And now we are living in an era where we can monitor and measure more effectively because there are tools that are being developed, then there is mobile technology which is available, then of course there is emphasis on the big data. So I think that should be the emphasis at the last that we should be able to measure the impact. So going forward, what success would look like after we all go back home. And I hope that the success would be to improve the implementation of the actions that you decide on here, and also I think the focus in the country how to improve the implementation of the existing program. Then secondly, of course, monitor progress and measure impact. And we hope that you will be able to emphasize the second part so that we learn what, what, from what we are doing. So here in conclusion, I would say that uh, we are really uh, excited about the week ahead, and I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for responding so well. And uh, we would provide whatever opportunities we can for you to use the resources in this room effectively. We would be distributing the bios of the resources that are available, the participants and their specialization, because you will be amazed what kind of skills are represented here. And Senegal is providing the best practical example. They want to use these resources to develop their health financing strategy, and we hope others will do that. And we are at your service, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akuya, um, and your panelists. Thank you so much. We want to. Uh, okay. We will soon take a break. We call it an icebreaker, and uh, we will want to introduce the various delegations here. We have uh, about nine countries represented here, together with international organizations. We want to hear from each of them. We'll give one minute each to the lead for each of the delegations so we hear what the expectations are and we hear why really they are here. Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister of Health in Ghana, Your Excellency, the American Ambassador to Ghana, 
my colleagues that are here, all protocol studio staff, I want to uh, bring you greetings from the, the Nigerian government. My name is uh, Francis Ubije. I lead the healthcare financing team in the Federal Ministry of Health in Nigeria. So as you can see, um, Nigeria probably has the, the largest dedication <laughs> to this watch. It is not just because we are a very large country, but again, it is also um, shows how important we ascribe to the, this workshop and what we are going to take away from it. So Nigeria is coming from um, the background of or a very critical period where not only that we have changed politically, but again we are embracing very um, great reforms in, in health generally and healthcare financing. So, um, how do we ensure that most of um, our population, especially those who are most in need, are covered on financial protection mechanisms? And since we have iterated a lot of uh, mechanisms and methods over some years, it is time for us to, to begin to look for a way of moving very quickly towards universal health coverage. And that led to the presidential declaration a few years back and then um, the new law, the National Health Act, is also giving us an opportunity to also look at um, some of the reforms. So we believe that this workshop will give us an opportunity to look more in depth into um, what has happened so far and then the critical steps to take to get towards universal health coverage okay. as quickly as possible. Right. So we'll be learning from the other countries that are here and also sharing our experiences. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. J'ai l'honneur de parler au nom de la délégation du Bénin, qui est composée de quatre personnes qui représentent respectivement le ministère de la Santé, le ministère des Finances, euh, l'OMS qui nous apporte un appui technique et l'USAID. Nous sommes là surtout pour apprendre parce que nous, nous avons commencé à peine. Nous, nous sommes en train d'expérimenter les phases pilotes et